in Miami, you'll meet Panamanians, Cubans, Puerto Ricans, Haitians, Bahamians, African Americans, and they're all Black. I'm not a native Floridian. So the Spectrum of Blackness project, it really started from this exploration of what does it constitute to be Black in Miami? Part of this speculation was trying to understand what are the commonalities that I've seen as a kid in my kitchen on my porch and how do I have shared experiences to those who also identify as Black but have a completely different ethnicity in mind. And the kitchen and the porch seem like two amazing spaces to do it because they're very contentious spaces. They're spaces that are extremely racially charged. They're charged with things around gender, around equity, around pay, around labor. I spoke with numerous women and men from various ethnicities, and all of the things that are shown within those collages are directly sourced from individuals from each of those ethnicities. Another part of the project is these custom-made spice labels. Instead of giving them their normal names, we put the times that we actually use them in Black families. So instead of saying paprika, it'll say, we use this on Thanksgiving on deviled eggs. Food really is the way to the heart, and it's something that we bond over so much and really show the ways in which we hang out, the ways in which we care for each other. I like to use the example of, of rice and peas, which depending on which ethnicity you're talking to, has a completely different name for the exact same thing. If you're Jamaican, you say rice and peas. If you're Haitian, you say rice and beans. If you're African American, you say red beans and rice. If you're Puerto Rican, you say arroz con condules. And it's literally all the same thing. That speaks to the differences within these cultures and these ethnicities. It really is emblematic of that spectrum of blackness. When I look at the mapping portion of my project, it's another way to tell the story that the collages don't tell. So what many don't know is that Miami was built off the backs of Bahamian immigrants and black immigrants from neighboring Georgia. And those people were not allowed to live by water. Those people were told that in order to access the water of this city, you would need a card that says, as a black person, you are allowed to be on the beach. So you're born by water, you grow up by water, you move to a city that's surrounded by water and you help build it, but then you're told you're not allowed to live by that water. One layer of the map is these historical articles from the Miami Herald. I tried to source historical documentation of the restriction of Black people in space, in the environment. The second layer of the map is the water mapping, which then shows where are Black people allowed to live in the city and what is their proximity to water. All of these things still work in the domestic realm because it's about where we live, it's about how we live, it's about who we're allowed to live next to. If you're a Black individual living in this city specifically, it's so hard to be mobile. And it's so hard to have access to just basic things like the beach. And now, ironically, the locations that Black people were forced to live in because of these discriminatory planning policies is now the areas that are the least vulnerable to sea level rise. And now these locations are under attack and vulnerable. Blackness isn't a monolith. There are some things that are shared and there are some that are completely different. The idea behind the project is to celebrate those similarities and those differences. When I talk about architecture and when I talk about the, the work that we do at Studio Barnes, one of my ultimate goals is to understand the connection between identity and architecture. Black people, I'd argue, occupy space the most intentionally. And part of my project is for people to understand that for many people that identify as Black in the U.S., really all you have is your imagination. And it's all you have because there's so many laws, whether implicit or explicit, there's so many people, whether implicit or explicit, that every single day, their goal is just to make your life a living hell. And most often, really all you could do is dream and imagine for something that's better.